So last video, I showed you a 400 block 40 by 10 piston door. This video is two by two. It's just four blocks. That's, that's, that's a, literally a hundred times smaller. Okay, so this one is a glass door and it's seamless and it's quick and easy to build. Probably, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. We press this button and there you go, glass folds away. It's actually kind of quick enough now that the limiting factor is the button and how long the button takes to press because it sort of goes off one way when the button is pressed and then another way when the button turns off. So we have to wait for the button to turn off for it to finish. Originally, you could only use a wooden button because the stone button would turn off too quick and it would break, but now I've got it fast enough that the stone button works fine. So I guess we'll go to the other side and we'll see what it looks like. So this is the redstone, it's two blocks wide. I was originally trying to make it one block wide, but I just found it too much of a pain. Uh, this redstone is just the input, so it doesn't actually stick out on that side, so it's pretty compact. I mean, obviously it dwarfs a regular 2x2 two two door, but that's not the point, is it? So I'll try and find a block I can actually use to activate it here. So it looks like we can use any of these floor ones. That kind of happens way too quick, I guess I'll just show it in slow motion or something. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'll remove the glass and things, but the, that's the gist of it. So there's weird things like this bit specifically, a target block, because that makes the redstone aim at the block. Whereas if it was a regular block, then the redstone aims at the piston and sets it off, which is wrong and breaks it. This redstone, it gets set off here and then set off by this repeater. When it got set off by the repeater the second time, it'll trigger the observer again because the redstone would change signal strength. So I had this annoying thing where the observer got triggered twice. It's It really is a mess of redstone. Like there's literally a piston here that is because this piston needs to be updated like a tick later. I don't know if that's still the case now I've changed it a bit, but yeah, I literally had to add a piston to push underneath just to update this piston to go off after this one had pulled in so it's a bunch of weird stuff like that so it's literally just a couple of double extenders on each side that push the glass in so we just move these blocks out the way and then push the glass to the middle with double extenders and then you put the blocks back that's how the entire door works so that's why it can be pretty quick is because it's only doing a very simple thing move blocks out way glass comes out and then put the blocks back so it's pretty simple pretty easy and i'll show you how to build it now Okay, so you're going to need a 10 by 2 area, and then your floor is three blocks up, so we go one, two, three, and there's our floor, and then it's just the middle two blocks at the front that we're going to walk into. And then for our pistons, we have two diagonally down at each side, aiming upwards. Then on the edge, one block above these, we have double extenders. We have two of those, one on top of the other, and then finally a piston above that. Same on the other side, and piston on top. Now one block above these, and directly above the bottom ones, we have pistons aiming downwards on each side. Okay, so firstly for these top and bottom pistons, we're going to put a block behind and to the right of this piston on the left, and we put a torch on it. Then coming out the side, we do a block with a repeater on it, aiming at the other piston. Coming out the left side, we do a redstone dust and then our target block to stop it aiming at the piston. Okay, to get the top ones, we do an observer above this redstone dust. This aims into the part of the wall, so that has to be a solid block. If you had something that's not a solid block, so like glass or stairs, you can actually put a trapdoor on top of this target block and do the same kind of thing, but you'd have to add another observer uh, above. But you put trapdoor here an observer that gets activated by this one, powering the trapdoor, and then a block above it. Then on our wall block, we have a repeater, just leave it on default. And then on the ceiling block here, we have a redstone dust. And one thing I've just noticed, the top pistons need to be a block higher up. 
If only I had something next to me that could tell me exactly where they were supposed to go. So we just have a block by this redstone dust next to the top piston that is now one block high, and a repeater aiming at the other one. So the redstone will power that. So now if we power all this, we should see all of those get set off and put the blocks in place and out of place. And this block is our input block, by the way. So for the double extenders, things get a bit funky. So the first thing is we've just got an observer aiming downwards onto the top. Because of some weird mechanics, this will power both of the pistons. And then same on the other side, observer aiming downwards. So it should look like that from the top into the bottom two pistons. So coming out on this side, we just have three blocks. We have a redstone dust on this one, a repeater on default on this one, and then a repeater on three ticks on the next one. Then this aims into a block with a torch on it. It turns out, right, I've done the double extenders one block too low as well. So sorry for this inconvenience, but you're going to have to move the double extender thing one block upwards. I would just redo the tutorial, but I've already done this once, so... <laughs> yep. Just move the one block up, please. And then block above that, torch. And then we put a torch on this block. You'll want to move that piston back in place. And then a block on top of that with a redstone dust. And because I hate myself, the way you get the power to go up is you do an observer above this repeater, going into the wall. And then we have a sticky piston with a block on it with two pieces of sand on top of it. And then at the top, we do a furnace or anything that will activate a comparator. We have a block coming out of that with a comparator. So to activate this comparator, I just put items in the furnace. So just get some items that aren't worth anything and put a stack of them in there. And that'll activate the comparator. And as in is tradition, this is supposed to be one block higher. I think I'll just fill in the rest of the block so we can see what the door kind of looks like. It's like that. Okay, coming from this comparator, we just have a couple of blocks. We have a repeater and then a redstone dust, then a block in front of that redstone dust, then a block with a repeater, then another redstone dust, block with a repeater, then two blocks going over the pistons with redstone on them, and another block below with redstone on it. Now, finally, just to keep these pistons off for longer, we're going to add a sticky piston aiming downwards, and that has a redstone block on the end. And then we have a block here that that will activate with a repeater on two ticks. Okay, the last things we need are the piston that activates this one through weird mechanics. And then to stop it messing up, we have to put some non-pushable blocks on top of the top pistons. So I use furnaces and that will stop them getting pushed upwards. I just realized I haven't put the blocks in, so we'll get our glass, pull it behind on these double extenders, put our two wall blocks in, and then if we press our button, it should activate like so. And there you go. So you can see the mechanism a lot better here, so this observer, when it gets pushed, activates the second part of the double extender to spit the glass box into the middle, and then it pulls back. And this observer will sell off these pistons to pull any blocks in if it was retracting them. And then these blocks get pushed back in their place, so there's a wall again. I think this is a pretty fast and compact design, because the thing that's limiting factor again is the button and when it turns off. So I guess I could try and reduce delays in places. You could probably make it faster by making it a bit bigger so you don't have to add repeaters everywhere to go around things. You could just run redstone and make it instant. But you know, pretty happy for what it is. It's a good balance of being small and fast. And I hope you enjoy using it in your world. So I've been Iden died, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.